The title of this article from the Post Millennial is a little misleading. Now, this U.S. State Department has ordered a voluntary departure of direct hire employees, staff, um, family members that live in Kiev and other consulate regions in that area because of the Russians on the other side of the border looking to, I don't know, take over Ukraine again. So what this article basically the title says is that the State Department orders families and dip, of diplomats to leave. Not correct. Case in point, when the pandemic kicked off and I was over in uh, Quito, Ecuador, my wife, wife worked in the embassy. They, at the time, ordered a voluntary departure of people back to the United States, you know, because at the time they thought the, you know, the pandemic was going to end like that. <laughs> it didn't, obviously. So what happened was, is that there was a lot of people that were TDY back in the United States, which means temporary duty, uh, from their duties in Quito, Ecuador. And they were, they never, some of those people never even came back. Their new, their replacements finally did come, come into the country. But for those people who, uh, you know, were not in the country, they were out for eight months and they just, you know, PCS, which permanent change of station to their new job. This is a tad different, even though, because there's a, huge army on the other side of the border and let's face it the potato is fucking stupid and he's going to allow the Russians to roll right into Ukraine it is what it is because Putin knows that there is going to be zero pushback now, I know what Anthony Blinken said shut up you fucking piece of shit my name is Anthony no it's Anthony Blinken fuck you douchebag so I kind of know a little bit about this so they're not involuntarily removing these people from the U- the Ukraine as of yet because there were basically you get some tweets out there saying that uh, commercial op- commercial flight options are still available go ahead and take them this is all voluntary it is very lucrative for these US State Department officials and diplomats to leave because when they go let's say they go back home or they go back to a uh, another city in the United States they can stay in a hotel almost indefinitely while this shit gets hashed out. So as when they're in the United States, they still do Zoom meetings and other sorts of um, teleconferencing back to work. But for the most part, the last person that'll technically leave an embassy will be the ambassador, technically, probably be the Marines, honestly. But so as we see this, the U.S. State Department has basically the correct term she has ordered the voluntary departure of diplomats' families from the U.S. Embassy in Kiev to essentially leave. Um, the U.S. citizens are also advised, okay, to leave the country as well. They say urge, advise, same thing. Um, so, is this is reported that Joe Biden's recent minor incursion remark Wednesday was deemed a green light for Russian President Vladimir Putin to enter Ukraine. Yeah, because that fucking potato is out of his goddamn mind. So anything he says, people are on it all. He's, he's, he's out of his fucking mind, so we can just do what we want. Basically, the potato, the occupier-in-chief, basically gave Putin the thumbs up to roll right across the border. Believe you and me, folks out there in Lazaland, this shit's going to happen. It's just when. You can't really predict when. Um, I'm sure there's intelligence agents and assets out there that kind of know. They kind of see the, you know, the tea leaves and sort of they're rolling the bones and they get the chicken blood in there. And like, all right, it's going to be on February 3rd around noontime. That's, that's who would really know. Other than that, it's all speculation. Um, he says, I think we, what we're going to see is that Russia will be held accountable if it invades. Oh, no, it's not. The potato thinks that they're going to punish Russia. Really? With what? How are you going to punish Russia? Oh, we're going to, you know, uh, freeze the bank accounts of their officials. And? And what? And then? um, It's one thing that if it's a minor incursion and we end up having to, to fight about it, to do and not... Oh, God, this Biden is fucking insane. Uh... One national security expert in Kyiv said officials were shocked and stunned by Biden's statement during the press conference where the U.S. potato was asked about how America intends to handle Russian 
invasion of Ukraine. This gives a green light to Putin to enter Ukraine at its at his pleasure, the official from Kiev said, said, adding, Kiev is stunned, referring to the Ukrainian government. Cena reported that one Ukrainian official, uh, Ukrainian official, left aghast and revealed to the network's correspondent Matthew Chance that he was shocked that the U.S. president, Potato, would distinguish between incursion and invasion. There you go, folks. Invasion is one thing, and incursion is another. Incursion is like, eh, we come across the border, we're checking things out. Uh, yeah, we'll leave shortly. Shortly can mean two months. And an invasion means ain't going, ain't leaving anytime soon. Invasion means definite. Incursion means, uh, you know, whatever. We feel like it. Um, and then... <laughs> Just one day after Biden's controversial comment, the president lashed out at a reporter for questioning his strategy with Ukraine. Quoting here from Jackie Heinrich, Why are you waiting on Putin to make the first move? Biden chuckled to himself and muttered, <laughs> Quiet enough that it wasn't picked up by some audio feeds. It now appears the reporter's question was, was not so stupid as Americans and diplomats are asked to flee the country. Well, they're not really fleeing. Again, it's just... Incursion, invasion, fleeing, voluntary uh, departure. I, I guess, you know, the vernacular and definitions of words sort of matter here. The White House Press Secretary uh, Thunderbush Jen Psaki also grilled on U.S. readiness to evacuate Americans from Ukraine. Psaki couldn't give an exact number when she was asked Friday how many Americans are currently in Ukraine. Oh, they know. They know approximately. That just goes to show you, folks, is that when you read these news articles, you need to know, you got to read down further. Even on the right side of the political spectrum, such as the post-millennial, it's not as bad as it's per, as it's shown here. It's basically an attention grabbing. But it's a, it's a voluntary departure, not an involuntary departure, meaning that you have to leave as per orders from the U.S. Embassy and or Consulate. Here, they're just saying, if you want to leave, you can leave, and we highly endorse it and or recommend it. As I stated before, there was a uh, voluntary departure throughout the world in the U.S. embassies where people were allowed to leave, you know, and it wasn't going to be uh, negative on their, you know, counseling reports or whatever, that they were allowed to leave back to the United States. Uh, my wife and I and my son, we didn't leave. We actually stayed in Quito the whole time. Um, you know, the whole world was being hit, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, they just do things a little weird down there as far as the pandemic and all that. But it, uh, that's it. That's neither here nor there. But again, going over the potato in the Ukraine, um, it, you basically, he basically just gave carte blanche the Putin and the Russian sister roll across the border and to incur on the border or do an incursion an incursion is an invasion it's just you know whether you stay there for two months or an indefinite period of time <laughs>